Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Happy Monday to you. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to our veterans as well out there. Deeply appreciate your service. Uh, my grandpa was a paratrooper in World War II. I've got a lot of military in my, my family. Uh, while I'm not uh, a service member myself, I deeply appreciate what you've done for our country. So really big thank you to that. Also, thank you to our community as well. I got some awesome feedback over the weekend. I figure I'd show you a couple comments here, give us a little uplift here, uh, and just say that uh, these guys are awesome. Deeply appreciate it. Well, there's occasional trolls, of course, that come through. My re recommendation to you is to just watch the entire video so you can make an informed decision and take ownership of your trades. Don't blame anyone else. Uh, take a look here, though. I've watched almost all channels, uh, crypto channels for now. This gentleman's the best trader, best view of the markets. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you as well, Michael Nemesis. I follow a lot of channels, a lot of traders. You're accurate as F. Uh, keep it going. <laughs> keep the money from, uh, Keep making money from your videos. I appreciate that. I'm a consistent follower. Your help. Thank you. Thank you, CC, best CC Bitcoin TA period. So again, I just want to kind of throw that out there and uh, you know, just say thank you again so much for being awesome parts of my life. Uh, this is fantastic to be able to, uh, to get that kind of feedback. And again, some people are a little nearsighted where they're going to just, they're going to hear what they want to hear. They walk away, they make a, a poor decision and they blame the next person. So please just re remember, trading is for you. I do this for you as well to ensure that you can maybe make a, an informed decision instead of being like uh, an emotional idiot, right? I try to make logic of this because even though what we're seeing right now is completely illogical, it's probably most likely emotional trading going on. And of course, market makers pushing the price up too. Um, we gotta be responsible and make sure we good, use, use good risk tolerance, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the backend data and double check some important stuff here with Bitcoin, such as liquidation. We can see in the last seven days here, dang near every single short consideration over the weekend has been uh, liquidated. And to give you perspective, our short position, we lost 30% on our trade here, right? Uh, granted, we're using 5% or less of our portfolio size, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But the truth is, when you take a trade, you want to make sure to use proper risk tolerance. And you can see here, uh, every single area of liquidation upwards of 84,000 is completely gone now. We've got some late shorts at 85 to 85.5, but um, the general consensus here is that we should see a minor pullback. Again, <laughs> minor pullbacks right now late, lately have been very small. So please understand if you're gonna short, uh, just you know, use, use proper risk tolerance and more importantly, uh, tighten your margins too, because shorts are inherently more risky. And if you're going to be um, you know, taking profits, you gotta secure profits quicker. Like and I, when I look back at our Bitcoin trade that didn't work out, the reason why it didn't work out is because I was shooting for about a 20% gain. And unfortunately, the way that worked out, um, we came like 15% into profit and then the price just took off. This happened on like Saturday nights when I wasn't even in front of the computer and everything just went crazy bonkers. So again, folks, cool stuff in a lot of ways, but not cool depending on how you look at it. So let's take a quick look here at this, at this liquidation delta. And anytime in the past, keep this in mind, right now we're seeing very new, unique situations with the market. But generally speaking, when you get between eight to 10 billion on average, at least this has worked out fairly well for the entire year, um, you usually see a pullback, right? So every time I look at liquidation delta, it basically tells us that we have, you know, X amount of longs versus shorts in the market. Right now we've got $18 billion in liquidation long delta, implying that if the price were to pull back to a certain level, we would see $18 billion liquidated from the market. Okay, so again, the higher that goes, the more likely the price is to pull back. But we are also seeing this, this, in, this parabolic type of run, this uh, monumental increase, and logic doesn't necessarily apply in these situations. So the thing you gotta recognize is that, you know, basically taking a short trade right now is just a bad idea. I've mentioned that in every one of my videos. Even if we were to take a short, you know, a quick short trade, the whole concept is that Bitcoin is still bullish. It's been that way for a very long time. We gotta recognize that. Having said that though, this is just something to be mindful of. Recognize that it's extremely, there's wait, it's just a super hot market, if you will. And um, while it would seem logical to want to kind of short into that, the truth is it's it's actually not now at this point because it's just, it's gotten past this point of really, it's very ridiculous as far as what we're seeing right now um, based on price action. It's a good ridiculous though, right? It's the right kind that we want to be on the right side of tracks on. It's exactly why I love ha having filled my spot bags in the, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50K range. So happy about that, of course, but... On the same accord, um, yeah, it can be frustrating when it's supposed to pull back, everything's telling it's going to, and then it doesn't, right? But that's what that's what these kind of markets are, are doing for us. They're they're completely irrational, and the best thing you can probably do is just literally take nothing but longs and be okay. The truth is you want to use low leverage, though, and I know that's the thing that a lot of people struggle with uh, because there's going to be some aggressive candle wicks. I mean, we can see, look, 
we came up to 81,000, dipped all the way back down to 785, and then within like a few hours, we're back up to 81.6. Like this is just complete nonsense as far as price action is concerned. Anyways, take a look here. 79,000 is the heaviest point of, um, not necessarily control, but the most amount of open interest. And that was roughly from Saturday when the price action continued to up past it resi its resistance at 77K, right? We take a look here, we can zoom in a little bit. There's a lot of open interest at about 82,000 as well. So we have people basically have the most amount of, the largest position size at 79K and 82K, just to, as a round, round number to give you perspective. Now we're gonna look at our macro uh, here today to kind of get started, just to kind of give you perspective on what's going on here because when it comes to the overall sentiment, we wanna recognize where we're at. And uh, you know, understanding the next steps, the next key FIB levels, is important. It's not everything. Uh, you're basically we're basically shooting in the dark right now, though. If anyone tells you confidently they, they think it's going to go to X level, um, I wouldn't really trust that. While I do feel like fib levels are important, and what we're going to be using is our local fibs here, or sorry, macro slash local. In other words, we're taking our highest point to our lowest point, right? So from the highest point previously back in what was it March to, of 74k, uh, all the way down to roughly 50,000. That would give us the FIB extension, essentially, basically letting us know how much higher the price could go. 0.618 or 1.618 is that area that's um, you know commonly rejected, uh, pretty pretty significant. And in other words, if we got up to about 89,000, it would make sense for the price to pull back. I'm expecting some resistance here at about 84, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But that's generally kind of what we're looking at here. So let's look at the weekly time frame and kind of work our way down here. So on the weekly, first and foremost. Um, we want to kind of take a look at the moving averages. So we're above all moving averages. We've known this for a while. Therefore, we're still bullish. Okay, again, that's the common narrative. We've talked about that for some time. Uh, it's going to be a while before we even break below those ranges. So we can just kind of presume that we're going up. All right. Same thing here as well with the RSI getting closer to uh, the 70 level. Typically, this is a rejection spot for most coins. Because uh, if you look at its history, for example, the last time we came up to 70 on the RSI, we hit, uh, it was right here at about 71,000, the price pulled back, okay? Now, I don't think we're gonna see that same exact kind of pullback based on the market, but just know we're coming into a resistance, so it would make sense for the price to kind of, uh, you know, plateau or consolidate in this range, maybe between 80,500 and 84K. Furthermore, if we take a look back here, we kind of go back a little ways. We take a look at the last time RSI was up over 70. That was in October on, in 2023, so it's right here. This is the guy right there. That's when RSI crossed over 70. And I'm just gonna kind of throw that out there because when the RSI came back down under 70, it was roughly about this range here. So we take a little just kind of pred prediction here basically from, from bottom to top, it was about 63%, or roughly by the time the RSI pulled back, it was about 40%. So we saw between a 40 to 60% gain last time the RSI peaked over that level. Uh, we take a look here as well, same scenario too, where we look at this area, RSI is crossing over 70 right here. And then of course, when it came back down, it was right in this range. So if we do the math on that, roughly we're looking at about a 50% from basically 50 to 70% continuation. So we're averaging somewhere in the range of just say 55, 60% uh, continuation when the RSI crosses through 70. We haven't done that yet, just to give you perspective. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there, giving you uh, an idea of you know when, when the price runs, how much further it will it could potentially run, um, and, and just generally what to look for. But the truth is, we're hitting 70 on the RSI right now, and that would imply that the price either will cool off, go sideways and or down, or it'll break through that resistance and just never look back, okay? It's more likely the latter of those two options, but I'm just kind of giving you, again, just uh, an unbiased, outlook on the on the market right we see here we can see macd is of course converging to money flow index is above the rsi that is generally a very favorable sign every time the rsi comes up above 70 and then the money flow index is above it generally favorable th things will happen so the, the weekly looks awesome there's no other way around it okay so you're generally going to find more success going up than down just know based on that resistance range there's a chance we could see a pullback now this, this is where things change a little bit too so when RSIs get overextended, um, you want to kind of pay attention to those and recognize kind of where we're at. So we are over 70 on the RSI. We've broken above as of Wednesday of last week. And in other words, when we were above that, we were leading into the weekend too with a, a little bit of an overextension there, but it hasn't pulled back yet. Key takeaway is that the, the conception is that this, this coin is overbought and essentially it keeps going up. So when it goes past that point, there's really no other consideration to want to 
to want to take a short. Okay, so when we take a look here, of course, we're at 80 plus on the RSI. Usually that is a, a case in point where the price will start to pull back. Um, or more importantly, the price goes sideways, RSI pulls back, and then the price goes up again later, right? So we're generally in a very, very favorable situation for longs, a very unfavorable situation for shorts. While it seems very juicy and like perfect to, to want to short the top, I totally get that. I mean, we shorted on Friday based on a massive amount of liquidation delta, and that has since doubled, right? So you can only take so much information and utilize it. But at this point here, everything's looking super, super strong, minus the fact that stochastic is kind of starting to top out, and that's kind of like an early sign that, hey, we're overextended, we should pull back. But again, that kind of logic doesn't necessarily apply right now. Let's take a look at TD Sequential. We're, we're about six days of continuation into this uptrend. Hypothetically, we got two or three more days of up, up, uptick until the price pulls back. Bitcoin has been good in its history of kind of turning around when, when it hits like a seven or an eight or a nine. So I'm guessing this week we're gonna see some type of capitulation, but uh, I don't necessarily think it's gonna be monumental, okay? Uh, I'd be surprised if we get back in the 70K range at this rate based on how strong it is, okay? But once more, the, basically the concept here is, is that when we look at the, the volume, this volume isn't tremendously better than before, right? It's good, don't get me wrong, it's, it's solid and consistent, but it just implies that there's not a lot of selling pressure too, okay? So nobody's really wanting to sell right now. So why try to sell when everyone's trying to buy? Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So that's kind of the concept here. So anyways, daily time frame is looking super strong. There's zero things you can say bad about it. Four hour time frame, roughly, it's gonna, I'm presuming it's gonna be the exact same here. We'll take a look, we're overextended, big surprise. We're basically, we've moved, moving about so 36 hours continuously without retent, without retrace, plus eight more hours. So we're basically eight hours of um, into overtime, if you will. Still over 70 on the RSI, do not consider selling, or um, essentially um, you wanna wait to take profit, is what this is basically telling us. So every single time frame is basically saying, hey, hold your long position open, there's no reason to short into this. Take a look at the hourly, same thing as well. If we take a look at the Ichimoku cloud, we can confirm. Every single sign here letting us know that there is no reason to consider a short and or not take a long right now, okay? Now, me personally, do I want to take a long at 84,000? No, but I also said the same thing at 77,000 too, right? So you can't be right all the time. It's perfectly fine. I can admit I was wrong, uh, but the truth is I wasn't wrong about the overall trend and the simple fact that we're still macro and we're still on the right side of the tracks. And to try to, you know, again, go try to anticipate the price coming down is very difficult just as well as it is difficult as the price is going to go up too right you got to recognize that but everything's pointing up so it makes more sense to go up than down okay so i hope that makes sense i described that somehow correctly um other than that really not much else to note i'll post our play out chart on twitter telegram and discord it'll basically be based it'll be based on these macro fib levels though because really uh, i don't care who you're following you're shooting in the dark at this point in either direction. There's no other way around it. Um, all the indicators are pointing up, so that makes more sense to go up, but how much higher up specific levels, you know, all these like, um, you know, areas that people kind of pull out of, uh, you know, are pulling out of the hat, so to speak. Um, just know that that really doesn't mean too much. So the important thing here is to watch your trades closely, continue to adjust your stop losses higher, and just ensure that you are in a, um, a better position than you were before by just making sure that you use good risk tolerance based on your risk tolerance, okay? Don't just take trades based on people telling it's gonna go up or down. Use your own your own uh, narrative there and figure it out. All right, last but not least too, of course, um, we got some awesome trading volume here so far. Definitely recommend um, jumping in here and essentially registering with BitUnix if you haven't already. A good 60K price pool should unlock here shortly. We're very, very close to 30 million, or sorry, 300 million volume. And once we hit that, it's uh, on to the next. Anyways, uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks again so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next one. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Take care.